Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at what I consider to be undervalued magic items, at least by my players, potions. This is going to include elixirs, filters, oils, and potions. We're going to take a look at the ones in the Dungeon Master Guide and the Unearthed Arcana. And there are also several that came from various articles, Dragon Magazine, etc., that are called together in the Encyclopedia Magica. We're going to take a look at these and why they are very good, uh, but usually undervalued by the, the player characters after about fourth or fifth level. And uh, some things you can do to kind of make them regret undervaluing them. And uh, some things that will happen if you drink more than one at a time. So today on page 121, potions. So your group has just completed a long, arduous quest, thrashing their way through the magic user's evil minions and ultimately slaying the mage himself. The treasure lies before them. And what do they see but a rack of eight potions? A groan ripples around your table as the players are all immediately disappointed. If you're anything like me, that's what you've had happen if you try to pop potions on a group of anything above about 6th or 7th level. Jaded is a word I like to throw around sometimes for veteran players, and I think that certainly applies when it comes to potions. I don't feel potions are a waste. I feel they're very important strategic magic items and can be useful at pretty much any level. I have yet to convince many of my players of that truth. So I'm going to plead my case to you guys, and you can decide whether it's so or not. I'm going to start out by taking a look at potions. Here we go, the manufacture of potions. A 7th level MU can begin manufacturing potions with the help of an alchemist. After 11th level, he doesn't need the alchemist. He can do it himself. Right there. Any excess coin gotten from uh, adventuring is certainly worth putting into some potions. You get a potion of flying or diminution, gaseous form. Those are all useful and can save you spell slots. There's just a lot of use for them. Uh, this section of the uh, DMG on page 116 goes very nicely into the manufacture of potions. The... Uh, uh, the Encyclopedia Ma or the Wizards, no, Encyclopedia Magica also has a great section on potions. And this brings us down to poisons, which only assassins of ninth level can create potions or poisons. And then we go to the special ingredient for potions, and everything's listed here for all the potions in the Dungeon Master Guide. So pretty straightforward. I like it. Uh, you can make your own. This is one of the few make your own magic items that player characters can reasonably do and afford. Um, I've always encouraged it. Rarely do my players take me up on it. I have done it with my own players, my own characters, where I've had a magic user who was high enough level. I've invested the coin. I, I usually carry quite a few potions. So come down to one of my favorite tables in the entire book, the Potion Missability Table. Yes, if you drink one or more, or if you drink more than one potion... Uh, you, this can happen. So this, the potion missability, the magical mixtures and compounds which comprise potions are not always compatible. You test the missability of potions whenever two potions are actually intermingled. You pour one into the other. Or a potion is consumed by a creature while another such liquid consumed is still in effect. It's possible you could have a result on this chart. <clears throat> this chart is a lot of fun. I've actually thrown in this chart many, many times over the 40 plus years I've DM'd this game. I have to say, yes, once I actually did get an explosion. I threw the O1, one and the player character exploded. I, I ruled him immediately dead, and he did damage to those in a radius standing about him. He had a, a potion, I want to say a fly on him, a very popular one at my table, and he drank a potion of healing. He had been cautioned earlier by me, the DM, to be careful about mixing potions. He didn't listen. I threw the dice. The dice dictated... Kaboom. I have also thrown one where we got a discovery. The admixture of the two potions has caused a special formula, caused one of the potions, two potions only to function, but its effects will be permanent upon the user. I changed that a little bit. I actually, I don't, it wasn't discovery, it was compatibility. But I gave him a permanent effect from it. He had consumed again a potion of flying in my campaign, and then he drank a potion of invisibility. I threw in the missability table, and I got compatibility, which I determined to make permanent for him because he got a good lucky roll on it. So what I ruled was that he could fly, 
the normal duration of a potion a day, and I'll get to that in a moment. But every time he did, he automatically turned invisible until such time as he attacked. So it was actually incredibly useful and used throughout the campaign for a lot of years. That was a higher level character, too. He's about 7th level when he did get that. Now I realize higher 7th level is not higher, but for potions, that tends to be the high end, the, the upper end of where you're going to be using potions. So now we go to the potion chart itself right here, and then we get, love that cartoon, we get to the description of potions. And potions are explained here. They're typically found in a ceramic, glass, metal flask, whatever you have. You taste a little bit. Uh, I'm going to taste a potion of climbing. I stick, stick my finger in. I taste a little bit, and I get a sudden urge to, you know, maybe I could climb the wall. Oh, okay, then it's a potion of climbing. So you don't need an identify for these, and I agree with that. You can just take a little taste of it and generally get an idea. There's good role-playing to be had here, and I've used it to good effect, where you give them an idea of what the effect of the potion will be. Potions generally are taken in full doses, but they can be taken in half doses. A potion taken in full dose, unless stated otherwise under the potion description, lasts four complete turns plus one die four additional turns, and then half of the potion is consumed. The effects are one half as long in some cases. That depends on the potion. So really what you're looking at is each individual potion will have its description. If there's no time limit given under the description, then the time limit is the Four turns plus one die four. Uh, incidentally, for potions of flying or polymorph, I let the player get a feel that it's about to wear off. I do the same for the spells. Uh, I'm not big into having people flying at 1,800 feet. Suddenly the potion wears off and down they go. That's not sporting to me. Uh, some of the old D&D stuff was definitely, uh, if not hostile, a uh, little difficult for the players, and I generally will avoid that. I, I consider my players to be a resource that I want to keep happy and enjoying the game, not that I want to laugh my tail off because they fell from a great height on their potion of flying wearing off. So then we get the different kinds of potions here, and a lot of these potions duplicate spells. Animal control, which could be a charm animal, clear audience, clairvoyance, climbing is you know a version of spider climb somewhat, diminution, which can be uh, the reverse of enlarge. So you get a lot of spells in here, that duplicate what potions do. So it's a good way to save yourself some spell slots is to just make and carry some potions. Dragon control. Interesting. The dragon gets a save, and dragons are usually good at that. And in my case, I would also give MR. I'm not crazy about potions of dragon control. ES ESP is pretty cool. Extra healing, a very popular one. It restores 3 die 8 plus 3 hit points if you drink the whole thing, or 1 die 8 if you drink a third, a third, a third, and a third. Fire resistance, which is really sweet, gives you fire resistance. Flying, as I've already discussed. Gaseous form, very useful. Never to be underestimated. Giant control. This one's I'd be a little more likely to quaff myself because giants don't have as good a saving throw as dragons. Giant strength, very popular at our table, even at higher levels. You get that fighter who's never gotten that girdle of giant strength. This is something they can use. Growth, an interesting one. Healing, the baby brother to extra healing, pretty good. Heroism, and then later the big brother of that one, superheroism, where you gain temporary levels to your fighter. Very useful. Human control, which is kind of a form of charm. Invisibility, I've discussed. Invulnerability, can only be hit by magical weapons for the time of the potion. So you see that there are some uses here. If I'm in a city and we have reason to think we're going to run afoul of uh, the Thieves Guild, for instance, or the City Watch, Drinking a potion of vulnerability before that encounter is going to pay huge dividends. It doesn't matter if it's a 12th level fighter. If he doesn't have a magic item, he can't hit me while I'm work under this potion. Levitation, very useful. Longevity, an incredibly useful one. It uh, increases your, or decreases your game age by 1 to 12 years. You do, there is a risk with it. Every time you drink it, there's a chance it'll all wear off at once and you become really old. Oil of etherealness, pretty cool. You go to the ethereal plane. Oil of slipperiness, not to be underestimated. Filter of love, you can make somebody think that you're romantically interesting. Uh, filter of persuasiveness, kind of a similar thing. Uh, but in this case, persuasiveness, if you're trying to sell some goods and you feel that uh, you're going to have a hard time selling those goods at a fair price, or you're unscrupulous and you just want a better price, you drink the quote, potion of pers persuasiveness, 
the filter of persuasiveness, and then go into your bargaining session. Plant control, poison I don't consider a potion myself. I, I pulled that out of here. Polymorph self gives the abilities of fourth level MU spell. Fabulous. Speed, like a haste spell. Superheroism I've mentioned. Sweetwater can make anything drinkable. Uh, one good strategy that my players have used in the past is to have sweet water. They're in that treacherous looking inn or at that state dinner that may or may not have bad designs for them. Uh, dump a little sweet water into your drink and you won't get slipped something you don't want to consume. Potion of treasure finding, ambiguous. I'm not a huge fan. Undead control and then water breathing. So very useful spells all the, all the way up. Doesn't matter what level you are. A lot of these potions duplicate spells and, and can come in very handy. I'm going to go ahead and go to Unearthed Arcana now. We're going to take a look at the, the potions in there. As in most things with Unearthed Arcana, the potions were expanded and in some cases made more powerful. You have the Elixir of Health, which gets rid of infection, disease, poisoning. Elixir of Life, which can get somebody back from essentially death. Elixir of Madness makes somebody go crazy. Youth, which is similar to the other from the Dungeon Master Guide. Potion of Fire Breath. You can actually breathe fire. Acid Resistance, very useful. You're going to fight that black dragon. You use the Oil of Acid Resistance. Now, oils, of course, are put on the exterior. So an Oil of Acid Resistance would have to be put on your flesh. I don't make the player stand there and rub oil over every inch of their skin. I let them apply it generally to themselves, and I let the magic just work. Oil of Disenchantment removes the enchantment upon living things. So you've got somebody who's charmed. It's useful to take that away. Elemental and Vulnerability. Any of the four basic uh, elements that you want, you have a chance of being invulnerable to the effects of that environment. Fiery Burning. Oil of Fumbling. Make somebody drop that weapon that's so important. Oil of Impact and Oil of Sharpness. Very similar. I have a, a plus two hammer. I can smear an Oil of Impact with plus two on it. And temporarily bump that to a plus four, plus four. Uh, oil of sharpness, same thing for swords. Oil of timelessness, preserve something. I wish we could have this for various game books that I have. Uh, they'd still be in pristine condition. Filter of beauty, you want to look really attractive for someone. There you go. Filter of glibness, another one where you can just kind of talk your way into or out of anything. Filter of stammering and stuttering. This can be... A bad thing, because you can't get through the sentence without stammering or stuttering, but it can be good to embarrass an opponent, for instance. Rainbow hues, you can make things change color. Ventriloquism explains itself in a potion of vitality. Now, I've run through the potions very quickly. I wasn't going to dwell on each individual potion, because you, as you can see, there's a large variety of them. There's even more when you get to Encyclopedia Magica under potion, because Dragon Magazine had them for years. One of the things I did... Uh, to my players years ago in a campaign, was I had given them potions. They were about 10th or 11th level. And um, they disdained the potions. Ah, oh, fine, potions, whatever. And particularly one player just took the potions and put them in a the portable hole and never really thought about them again. I made a note of my uh, record who had that particular potion. So the game progressed. The character went up another few levels. And several difficult situations had been encountered and gotten out of one way or the other. The player finally got around to taking a look at that potion and found out that it was a potion that granted one wish. Had he bothered exploring that, even tasting it, I would have given him a hint that it would have given him a wish. The wish would have been useful many times up to that point. Now, he still had the wish, but he was groaning because he hadn't paid attention to it. And here he was carrying around a wish that he didn't know he had for a real long time. It was actually genuinely in, game, in real time, about two or three years. That this went on. And as I said, I, I noted it very carefully. And every time he played that character, I paid special attention to whether he would do anything with the potion. I even dropped a few hints that never really got picked up on. So there are ways you can play around with the players a little bit. You can kind of show them that it's worth taking a look at the potion. You can have your monsters or bad guys use potions. A potion of gaseous form being used to escape a group of player characters. That's going to catch their attention real quick. It's going to make them think twice about the potion. There are a lot of potions that can be uh, very powerful. Uh, potion missability is always a fun thing. That exists very much in my campaign. It isn't going anywhere anytime soon. You drink more than one potion or elixir or filter, we roll on the table and we see what happens. So 
That's it. That's my brief look at potions today, uh, an undervalued magic item in my opinion, and something that uh, I take note of when I play as a player character, and I, I my players watch my channel. So guys, potions, they're definitely worth taking. So that's all I've got to say today on page 121. I want to thank you for tuning in. Please remember the Patreon. I can use a little help to uh, help grow the channel. And uh, if you liked what you heard and saw, please tell a friend uh, and like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on page 121.